And I am back and I am here with Claire from Grabio. Claire, thank you so much for being here with You're us welcome. today. Thanks for having us. Of thank you. course. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what Grabio does? Sure, absolutely. So we are a, um, a modern SaaS solution for live production, uh, distribution, and uh, video monetization. We're 100% um, built in the cloud, so all of that is accessed via just your uh, web browser. So once you've got the video feeds encoded, you can produce content, produce really high quality uh, uh, content, um, and uh, distribute that to any digital or linear um, uh, endpoint. So that's, that's great. And so is there any kind of content that you're focused on or is it all content? So we work in the live space. Um, so our platform provides our customers such as broadcasters or rights holders or sports clubs and teams to produce live shows. So we, um, we, we offer obviously our platform is an enabler for them to produce live content outside of live games as well you know it's all about fan engagement is highest with live content right. so um, it, it, it's an enabling thing we've democratized live video production to make it really accessible um, for everybody so um, yeah it's a really exciting time and so what differentiates Grabio from any other SaaS live I would say for in the, from a cloud perspective, um, yeah. you've got options like build your own, um, you know, where, where you have your own engineering resources um, that um, you know you might need to get stacks together. You've got engineering resources to build out, build it out. So that, there's a role to there's a role for that as well. Yeah. But there's also when you don't have the engineering resources and the maintenance resources and perhaps even the budget to do that, um, you you know we offer a modern SaaS solution to do kind of like the same thing. So high quality output. So um, you don't have to have um, you know massive budgets. The price uh, the the production cost per hour is significantly more reduced over traditional in some cases between 65 and 70 percent so it all of a sudden becomes a possible thing for perhaps the lower sports to do when they don't have the big to actually produce their own live content um, and uh, yeah so we're seeing massive really interesting use cases of adoption both from big, big broadcasters where they're taking their broadcast feed and they're doing alternative broadcasts such as remote commentary or um, localization um, versus those that really don't have that expertise or knowledge or resources to do that where they can now actually do it um, through Grabio and, and, a, and, a, and a live production platform. So it's a modern SaaS solution for live production. Oh, that's so cool. And I think what's interesting about that too is you're by democratizing it, you're also creating more content that's available for people, right? By making it easy for people to use, um, we're going to see more content, different sports that maybe aren't getting like the proper viewing right now, right? Absolutely, and I think, um, I mean, to your point, uh, if you're a sport that needs to grow eyeballs on their sport, I mean, half the time to do that is by making it available. You know, you've got a venue, there's a, obviously a catchment area, a catchment sort of capacity on, on a venue, whereas if you're putting content out on social media or your fast platform or your OTT own channels, like you might, your app, for example, your website, and um, you're growing more eyeballs on the sport, yeah. what that will then enable is for that sport to have more um, sponsorship inventory, um, and to be make it even more attractive to sponsors so there's a whole commercial dimension as well to being able to produce um, your own um, you know live content and matches or games wherever it might be that is so cool and I think you were nominated for Products, yes, yeah. product of the year. So at NEB this year, we've um, launched um, our integration with Magnify um, mm. for automated highlights um, and live clipping. Um, basically, what that enables um, um, any live, if you've got a live feed coming in from a sports, for, uh, from a game, football or soccer or whatever the case is, you're able to just get those automated highlights logged. So you can do that at scale. Uh, what that allows um, the editors to do is to um, have that editorial control. They can really focus on storytelling, really get that those magic moments and really tell and craft that story, knowing that those automated highlights are logged, um, so you're never going to miss that moment. So I think in some cases, in some automation platforms, you know, when they're doing spitting out volume, you do get that little bit of, you know, strange content going out there. At the end of the day, you've got five seconds or whatever it is to make that, you know, um, those those viewers uh, really engage with your content. So um, that 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 curation and that lens of human-centered AI um, is 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 something that's really really exciting. And of course, you know, it's not going away. Uh, and this is just the start. Uh, we've got a lot more plans to uh, get more busy with automation going forward. Oh, that's so cool. Well, that is all very, very exciting. Uh, what have you seen at the show that you're excited out about outside of Gravio right now? I think automation in terms of, I mean, we're, yeah. in, the, we're in West Hall, right? So yeah. it's all about um, technology. Uh, yeah. But I think automation um, is, a, is a thing that's not going to go away. That's, that's a very exciting place yeah. to be. 
Um, I also think that the art of possible is really exciting. Um, with technology being as it is at the moment and it's very accessible, and I'm not just talking about Grabio's platform, but you're able to do a lot more with a lot less. Yeah. Uh, the macroeconomic um, yeah. issues that we've all been facing over the last sort of 24, 48, uh, 24 months or so um, is severe. And, um, you know, there is this general mantra to, to, to do more with less, um, you, you know, if your hardware is coming to end of life, for example, you kind of have to look at alternative ways to, to do the same thing. So I think that for me, the technology is, is it's cloud is a thing, I mean obviously it's a thing, um, but it's been talked about for ages, but it's actually becoming real and we're seeing really innovative use cases every single day um, and it's just going to get bigger and better, so it's a very exciting place. Well, I think that's so good too that you were talking about like that automation component of things because I think, you know, the term that we keep hearing during the show, of course, is AI, right? And so I think when we're looking at AI, sometimes we lean into it and sometimes we lean away from it, but AI will help, I think, with that automation, with those workflows. I agree, and I think it goes to sort of what I was speaking about earlier, yeah. um, about that sort of human-centered AI. Yeah. Uh, I mean, AI is everywhere, just, you know, look at ChatGPT, yeah. Dali, there's all sorts of things going off. Um, but, you know, you do have to have that lens of human curation. Um, yeah. So I think that, you know, I mean, the old adage is it's not, it's not AI that's going to take over your job, it's the people that know AI that's going that's to take right. over your job. Right. So, um, yeah, it's not, not going to go away, but I do think that you have to have that human level um, of curation to, uh, to make it really do the job it's meant to do. Yeah. yeah. No, totally agree. I mean, I feel like I could keep talking to you for hours on this. <laughs> we could just keep talking. Um, but we can't, alas. No. I know, I know. So we'll we'll have a drink later and we'll for talk sure. about it. Um, but back to, we're going to go back to um, a break. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Clara, for being here. It was so nice to see you. Thank you. That was great.